Hello everyone and welcome to Magical Girls Explain. I today I will be talking about the Monty twins. But I'm gonna give them their own video in part depending on where you are watching or reading this as I post these on Wattpad 2. Today we'll focus on Sukio and then we'll talk about Tusaka in the next video. Now, if you have seen the videos or read what I have said for Alia Gray and Toka Satomi, I did mention that my friend, who I call Kat, was supposed to be voicing for Alia Gray and Osutusuko and Tusaka, but she backed it out at the last moment because she had to happen to be lazy. Kat, I am looking at you. But anyways, you may have heard her voice at the end of Mifiri's video, but let's get on with talking about Tusuko. Tsukio Amane is a 17-year-old magical girl. Her height is 158 centimeters. Her eyes are dark red, and her hair color is brown. She comes from Mizuno Ward in Kamehameha City. Tsuko, like her sister Tsuka, soul gem is red yang yang located on a necklace on their necks. Tsuko also has the same weapon as her sister, a shinobo, which is a Japanese bamboo flute. This type of flute is used in Shino music. Tusuko's wish in Japo is dumb. She attends the Mizuna Girls School and is in the 11th grade. Tusuko's wish was to never hate her sister. We don't want to hate each other. Tusuko's magical element is a dark element, and her ability is sound wave revelation. Tusuka's twin sister, Tuseko, hopes to liberate magical girls. Consistent training in music, choreography, and dance has granted her capable skills. Though she is admired by her peers, she doesn't have any friends she feels she can open up to. She can only be at peace when she is with her sister, Tusaka. The Double of Isolation, its form is a terrarium. The master of this doppel isn't displayed about mood or emotion. She does, however, rely on her other half, the only person who truly understands her. Though this, the two of them are capable of completely isolating themselves from the outside. Together in their miniature world, they need only the company of the other to survive. The doppel suits out all physical and magical, girl, magical phenomenon, allowing its master to perfectly protect herself and her twin. Though doing so causes their memories of anyone but each other to fade away. Tsukuyo appears with her sister Tusaka when the Mizuki Villa Magical Girls at the time, which was only Yachisho, Iroha, and Chuno, and Felicia Mitsuki, who joins them after, go to defeat the Iwasa of Misery Water. When Iroha and Felicia drink the water and have their days count down by fake good luck, Kyoko Sakura is also involved in this. When going to the hideout of the Iwasa of Misery Water, where it is being guarded by Wings of Magius members, two white feathers, they are revealed to be Tusako and Tusaka Mane. They do start off as antagonists at the beginning, but become allies after the last battle of Arc 1 and disband of the Wings of Magius to become the Kamehama Magia Union. In the abandoned museum, Mifuyu tells Tuseko and Tuseka that the AI rumor has disappeared and they need to be more careful. The Yamanes apologize, claiming their actions were worthless. Mifuyu says they did a good job on the website and won't blame them. 
Chisako wonders why their opponents are so fixated on rumors. Chisako says if they just left them alone, the victims will eventually be freed. Mifuyu says uh, uh, that Iroha is looking for a younger sister, and found a lead in the rumors. The Mainais are reminded of themselves, when they didn't know each other. Alia Gray appears and asks what they are talking about. She says she's curious about their past, and wishes, and says she let, th let them off easily if they tell her. She says their flutes might become her favorite pigment if they don't to say anything. The girls understand and begin to tell their story. A long time ago, Tusakak was far buster than she was, being forced into clubs in practice. Tusako tells her Kanto cub that she needs to prepare for the culture festival and strive in the urn of the golden medal. She says doing so otherwise would shame Lufiu's achievements. Afterwards, Tsuko thinks she still has a brushwork practice and dance lessons. However, she thinks that Tsuko Asukuki will not scramble. Suddenly, Mifuyu arrives. Tsuko says Mifuyu should be off from school until graduation, and she should be finished with the Kaito Club. Mifuyu says her for the handcraft, handcraft club, whose president is in the hospital. Mifuyu asks Tsuko if she was considering on practice. Tsuko says she was, and also she was asked by the choreography club to help. Then the Japanese Dance Association called her. Mifuyu wonders why she can't turn them down and take a break. Tsuko says she apprentices at the fact that they ask her. Mifuyu says Tsuko shouldn't overwork herself, especially when, strict, when her strict grandmother. Tsuko admits her grandmother would be angry even if she collapsed. Mifuyu says it must be tough to be born in the Mizuza ward. When Tsuko says it should be the same for her, Mifuyu say, if you say it comprehends Tsuko's family, she has it easy. Tsuko said, narrates that Mizuno war girls undo, undergo the appropriate education so as to not shame their ancestors' history. In her own family, their honor traditions consider outdated. Tsuko says that she was forced to attend all sorts of practice, which tired her m mentally and physically. When she returns home, her grandmother asks if she had made progress. Tsuko says she can look forward to their next recital. Her grandmother then says she is going to test Tsuko on the dish she taught her yesterday. Tsuko asks for a short break, but her grandmother tells her not to be so weak. She says at her age, she's never even think of asking that and claims she's trying to go easy on Tsuko. That night, Tsuko's grandmother presses her mental and s says that they'll have it for dinner. But before she can give Tsuko her next task, she is interrupted by Tsuko's mother. Tsuko's mother says that Tsuko is at her limit. Tsuko's grandmother tells her daughter not to butt in when, they, when she gave her up halfway. She says she won't, won't let Tsuko be taken by some strange man like her, her mother was. Tsuko tells her mother not to worry because she can handle it. Tsuko narrates that due to her constant practice in errands for her for other people, she would start to lose sight of herself. The thing that saved her from this was her bamboo flu her father gave her when she was young. Her grandmother would always get angry when she saw it, so Tsuko kept it hidden. Occasionally, she would take it out and play which was the greatest source of comfort. Tsuko would play the flute at the shrine some distance from the house. One day after she finished playing, she sees a glimpse of a girl who looks like her. her. Tsuko narrates that she, that she was her first meeting of Tsuka and the first event leading to their wishes. For some time after, Tsuko would be disdained by the person she saw at the time, to the point where it affected her club practice. 
Her fellow members noticed her discomfort and offered her a short break. Suzo is reluctant to accept, but reconsiders when she goes outside. If you say Suzuko crying, she Mufio asks her what's wrong, but Suzuko thinks Mufio wouldn't believe her. She tells Mufio that practice is tough. Mufio asks if she can put a word in her for Suzuko. When they were not from the same family, Suzuko says they just get angry at Mufio and insists she is has it handled. Mufio asks what Suzuko is really worried about. She says that she worries Suzuko well from being a the Kaito president, club president, and so knew she was hiding something. Suzuko relents and tells her about the girl she saw. If you ask if it really was that scary, Suzuko claims that if you meet a your doppelganger, you die. She says her grandmother told her it, it happened on TV a while back. Suzuko tells Mivu that this might be her last goodbye. Mivu bursts out laughing and says it was just a superstition. When Suzuko protests, Mivu tells her to go to the shrine and talk, take another look. Mivu says she's sure it would turn out to be nothing. At the shrine, Suzuko closes her eyes due to her fear. She then bumps into someone, which turns out to be the girl who she looks at like at herself. Two of them start talking at the same time, asking the other not to kill them. Suddenly, the girls ask if Tsuko's name is Tsusaka Imani. Tsuko explains that her own name is different. The girls are shocked by the amount of coincidences. Tsusuko and Tsusaka, why she was, comes to the shrine. And Tsusaka answers she goes here when she is tired. Tsusuko says the same is true for her when she reveals she was named at the shrine. Tsusaka says that's the same and is also true to her. Tsusuko begins to wonder if Tsusaka really is her doppelganger. She asks Tsusaka what she came here to do, and the two decide to answer on the count of three. They both say they were going to play their flutes. Convinced that the other is a doppelganger, the two girls try to distract each other, then run away. However, they bump into each other and drop their flutes. The girls see that both flutes are the same exact. For one difference, each flute has a half moon shape, inscribed in the opposite direction from the other. Both of them were the flutes of Tsuko's father, but Tsuko and Tsuko realized that their real names contain the names of the characters of Moon, and dispute that they are twin sisters. Tsuko explains that their father is a craftsman who runs the Amane Bumbo workshop, and that Tsuko's last name was originally Amane, she said as well. The girls then started to talk about themselves. Tsuko complains that her grandmother enrolls her in practice on the weekends without telling her. Tsuko understands her grandmother wants her to be a proper Mizuna lady, but doesn't think she should sacrifice her individually. Tsuko says that she has no time for her own, and even though everyone expects her, no one wants to be her friends. Tsuko understands and says they are very similar in that. To Tsuko, Tsuko was the first person she could speak her own true thoughts with too, without hesitation. The girls plan to meet again in the future. Recognizing their parents try to hide their relationship, the two recorded their content in contact information under their pseudonyms. For Tsuko, she recorded Tsuko under Hollow Circle, the symbol of the full moon. Suzuko narrates that there was meaning in the flute from her father. While Tusuka and Tusuko were happy to talk to each other at first, they began to see some different sides to themselves. When the girls eat at the restaurant, Tusuko admits she never eaten a hamburger or fried fries when Tusuko shows her how. Tusuko is shocked seeing using her bare hands to eat. Tsuko couldn't help but think that it was improper for Tsuko to cross her legs and eat food when her bare, with her bare hands. Tsuko then tasks Tsuko to use chopsticks. 
explaining that the clothes are clean thoroughly. Tsuko thinks wearing used clothes meant Tsuka didn't care about her appearance. Suddenly, one of the Tsuka's friends calls her out. She asks if Tsuka was her twin, but Tsuka denies this and playfully hints she's a friend. Tsuko tells Tsuka they shouldn't hint people, but Tsuka says they are close enough to do that. Tsuko says to believe that Tsuka was a comparison person. Tsuko narrates that the more they met, the less Tsuka and her views aligned. In highlight sight, Tsuko admits she was arrogant of socially, but at the time her friendship was with Tsuka was disordained. One day, Tsuko asked her mother why she split with her father. Her mother said it was because they couldn't bury their differences. She says that their love overcoming differences in status and upbringings was just a fantasy. Tsuko's mother suggested she pick friends and lovers that are well matched with the, her. Tsuko's mother says that once her feelings were hurt, she won't be able to mend them. Tsuko narrates that her mother's answers sharply pierced her and lynched her like a curse. One day, as the twins walked through the city, Tsuko felt the people were giving her strange looks. The twins tell each other there is something they need to ask. Then they start talking about their mutual divinations. Tsuka says that Tsuko is giving her a strange look, while Tsuko says Tsuko is being mean. Tsuko narrates that Tsuko was fed up uh, with how polite she was. Tsuka believes that Tsuko was too concerned with appearances and was using Tsuka to make herself look better. The girls criticize each other, then argued. Tsuka yells about how Tsuko is always so concerned with formally. She says she should take a chill pill and relax, and Tsuka finds it fitting to be around her. Tsuko says that Tsuka's idea of relaxation is voluntary. She never asks her to pay her attention like this, so at least Tsuka can reform her manners. Tsuka says Tsuko's lifestyle and behavior is far from normal and says she's never had friends if she's so formal at all times. Tsuko says that Tsuka's friends are only friends on her surface sides, since she doesn't tell them her true feelings. Tsuka says they can't understand what she's going through. Tsuko says Tsuka should understand she feels the same way with her grandmother to deal with. Tsuka says she has to deal with her father and his apprentices. The girls decide they don't want to see each other anymore and probably are twins. Tsuko thinks her mother was right. For a while, the girls stop seeing each other. One day, Mifu meets up with Tsuko at school. She says the club president was fitting to in recovered. Tsuko apologizes since they only got to the silver medal at the culture festival. Mifu says it's fine and asks Tsuko if it's, she's alright. She says Tsuko was looking a bit better for a while, but now it is back to her serious face. Tsuko tells her not to worry, and she is glad Mifu is concerned for her. Tsuko thinks she'll skip practice, play the flute, and go home. She thinks she can't take it anymore, unless she does it. However, worried she'll run into Tsuka, she decides to play it at the riverbank. However, even though she plays the flute, she still feels sad. Tsuko admits that she still wants to talk about to Tsuka. However, they were only happy when voicing their gates to each other. And once they found aspects of each other that they didn't like, those became too noticeable. Suddenly, Tsuko gets a message from her grandmother. It is her grandmother scolds her for taking a break without permission and says she's a fool to think Tsuko wouldn't spoil the Asasuki name, family name. She says she's asked Tsuko instructions for twice as much practice as the break she's taken. She tells her one to move until her grandmother can pick her up.
Tuzuko suddenly lashes out at her grandmother. She insists she's an amane, not her grandmother's doll, or a sacrifice for the Asakuguki family. Suddenly, Tuzuko loses consciousness. The last thing she remembers is Mifuyu calling out her name. At the hospital, Mifuyu is there to see her. She tells Tuzuko that, that the doctors believe she collapsed from stress. Mifuyu is surprised to find Tuzuko's younger sister, Twin, also collapsed at the same time. Tuzuko says it's just a misunderstanding, but Mifuyu said it is a part of remembered them. Apparently, they were the first in childbirth he was in charge of. When they were born, the girls were holding hands. Tuzuko thinks she accepted Tuzuka the moment she was born and regretted it getting angry at her trialful things. Mifuyu says she has a call that she needs to make and leaves. Tuzuka arrives to talk to her sister. She suggests they know they throw everything fair of their past away and start a blank slate. Tuzuka thinks if they do, don't do, they will be crushed by the adults. Tuzuko says she was thinking the same thing. They should start over from where they received their names from the shrine. The girls agreed to become each other's sisters again. Susuko says that they might end up hating each other again, and the girls think their hearts m might not be able to take it. When Susuko thinks that her mother's words from earlier, Kibe appears and says their pledge can be granted as a witch. The girls both wish for the same thing. I want us to never hit each other. Back in the present, the girls finish their story. Mifuyu says she was quite surprised when she came back to Tsuzuko's room. Alia grunts at herself and leaves. Tsuzuko says as if she didn't like it, and Tsuzuko begs for forgiveness. Alia says she won't do anything to them. Their story simply inspired her to make some artwork. The Yamanis are relieved. Mifuyu figures they should go themselves. Tsuzuko suggests that Tsuzuka that they should play at the shrine on the way back. Since it's been a while, Tsuzuka agrees. Tsuzuko thinks she's fruit songs is hesitating and lovely, which it is what has been ever since she found it. When she plays her harp glows warm. Oh sound, where are you headed? To be my answer and since his younger sister. She narrates that their only allies are each other, and they are always together. Although seemingly unrelated to their wish, Suzuko and Tusaka have the shared ability of sound wave emulation, allowing them to generally enhance the volume and strength of sound and sound-based attacks, most commonly those of their flute weapons. This ability also allows them to amplify the range of the Magic Girl's celebrity, their own, their own of that allowing, of allowing them to contact each other Magic Girls without using their usual range. This is likely possible because Magic Record establishes the, that message, even though non-telepathic ones can be broadcast to Magic Girls via radio waves. Character in her last name means heaven and sound, respectfully. The character's first name means moon and night, respectfully. Fact 1 Suzuko's illustrator is Hayami Shika. Fact 2 The doppel's names of Suzuko and Tuzuka match up that they are references to Twiddledum and Tweedledee from The Alice in Wonderland. Fact 3, Tsuko's voice actor is Mayu Uchida, who has the same last name as the name of Suzuka's voice actor, which makes me think if they are twins, too, but it just seems to be a coincidence, as it was not able as I was not able to find this as proof. But anyways, you may know Mayu, Mayu Uchida for playing characters such as Aluka Sogid in Hunter x Hunter x Hunter. Dorten in Datama, Mizuki Imizuma from Hindu Logic from Lucking Logic, and Red Barrel from Land of the Luscious. 
Her English VA is Jenny Kwan, who you may know for playing characters Mira Harvent in Dorara, Satoko Hojo in They Cry, Suki in Avatar The Last Airbender, Mayoko Nis in High Rise Invasion, and Inusuke's mother, and finally Kagushi in Demon Slayer. And so we come to a close on Susugo Amani. Next time we will talk about her sister Tisaka Amani and then head on to the side story magic girls. Maybe one day I'll talk about the Octoon girls, but as I said at the ending of Nikki Ma Yakumo, I am speaking I'm skipping them for now as I am unfamiliar with Arc 2 of Magia Record. Anyways, goodbye for now.